So what is an overview of how to scale and grow your business? What steps really need to happen when you want to grow from a one-woman business to building a proper business? My name is Tineke Rense from Powerful Business Academy and I help self-employed businesswomen build a business and create massive income. So what are the steps? If you're in the process where you are still doing everything on your own, you're starting to feel overwhelmed, you, you have not enough time for customer service, you have more customers than you can uh, even accept, um, then it is time to scale, to upscale. And yes, I know, <laughs> I've done it quite a few times. That's not an easy step. Because before, even though it not always has been comfortable, it was always you, yourself and you. Yeah, or me, myself and I. But that's not a sustainable way if you really want to make a lot of impact and if you really want to create and build a business. So what to do? First of all, you need to start duplicating yourself. So you need more people in your business, team. Whether that's a business partner, whether that's uh, someone you hire, whether that's someone you employ, whether that's a freelancer, uh, but someone you can delegate to, or when it's a business partner, of course, you uh, agree together who's going to do what and wh who has which strengths and who hasn't. Um, so, that, so, so you need to stop doing everything on your own. That's number one. That's key. And that is the biggest, biggest change in every business. In every business. Because many businesses start out on their own. And I also see with many of my clients that usually they wait too long. They are up here in work. They are frustrated. They're overwhelmed. They have no time. And then it's too late to delegate because if you dele start delegating, you need to take a step back. You need to invest time in that. You need to train people. You need to find people. And in the beginning, yeah, they make mistakes. And that's one of the reasons why many women don't want to even consider doing it. Because they don't like making mistakes let alone other people making mistakes on their behalf. But you have to get over that. Because if you really have a big mission, and if you want to make a lot of impact, there's no other way in scaling than duplicating yourself. You need to have more people doing what you do, or you delegate things to that you don't love doing and you're not good at. Okay, next step. When you have team or when you have people that work with you in your business or on your business, you need tools. You need tools to communicate with them. You need a project management tool. A tool where you can uh, add deadlines, where you can talk to one another, where you can delegate, where you can add images, videos, explanations, documents, where you can track who's been working on what and what time. So that is something which is important, uh, especially if you work on a distance with people. If you're in, your, say in, in one office, you can have a, a team meeting every morning and then you also know where you are or at the end of the day. Yeah, but when you work on a distance, you need a project management tool. Also for team, you need to start creating standard operation procedures or SOPs and SOPs is a step by step guideline how to do a certain task. And those are important because every step of the task is written out or has been created in a video or has extra documents with uh, or screenshots so that it's clear, do this, do that, do this, and maybe you build in some safe uh, security. So at step three, they always need to check in with you to, to see if they're still on the right track, whatever you want. But that's really important because only then can you assure that the outcome will be the way that you have planned it. 
And don't think that when you create SOPs that immediately the outcome will be the way you had planned it because people will misunderstand. You will need to learn how to explain uh, for a task. So this takes time, but eventually it really helps. It really works and it saves you a lot of time when you're delegating. There's one but though, when the team doesn't use the SOPs. And I, I, that happens to me a lot. It happened in the past. They get so, especially with recurring tasks, they think, they believe that they know it. And it's their ego and the ego thinks, I don't need a checklist. And then things start to go wrong. Just happened to me in my team today. Next thing, still scaling regards to team, you need to settle team meetings at least once a week. But you can also do everyday kickoff meetings. Depending if you're in various places in the world, then this might not always be uh, the best thing to do, but at least once a week. You can also do co working sessions where you all log in at a certain time and work together on a task. Then there's short distances, you can immediately ask, you don't need to wait for an answer, so you can continue working and create momentum. But all of you. Yeah? So that's all about team, the major things. And of course, that you need to start having the money to pay them. So your sales should increase drastically if you start to hire or duplicate yourself. All right? Because those people cost money. And it's not always the case that they make money. It's also possible that they save you time so you can make more money. You do more sales. Yeah? Next step. You need to start automating. When your business grows, you need to be able to rely on automation. You cannot have everything here in your mind every, uh, anymore. When more people are working with one client, you need a CRM system, custom relation management system, where the data of one client is all together and everybody who's, who's access to it can, can see it, can add uh, parts to the conversation, can add documents. Uh, you need to have that. Um, and yes, that's in initially a costly uh, thing, but eventually it will save you from making mistakes and it will save you a lot of time and you work a lot more professional, all of you in the team. And there's also other things that help. Whenever there's a lot of recurring tasks, you should look at automation because who, whoever you pay is usually more expensive than the automation. Again, Initially, initially it will cost you probably time and money uh, to do the automation, but eventually it saves you time and money because people don't need to do it anymore. It's your tool that does the work, okay? Know your numbers. You need to know and gather data uh, from your business. How many calls have there been? How many emails have been sent out? What has been the engagement on social media? What has been the sales? Um, uh, uh, and, and various margins on this, profit margin. You also need to look at finance. Finance, the bigger your business uh, becomes, the more important it becomes. Because if you have money leaks, um, for example, if, if you have, biz, uh, you have money, uh, money leaks. When, when you have a 1% leak of 50,000, that's a total different number than when there is a 1% leak of half a million or even more. So it's very important to find out where is the money leaking away in the back door of your business. You need to be aware of that. It's important. And it all starts with you stepping up and becoming a leader. And that's my last advice. You have to be a leader. You have to be uh, willing to take decisions. You have to be willing to not accept certain behavior. You have to be willing to step up. You have to be willing to hold the space for your team. When things are not going the way they should go, they still need to be involved. They still need to be committed. So. It's very important that you become a leader. And this is something that 
Many women aren't initially, and that is why they believe it is, and, 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 and they continue playing safe, doing everything on their own. And they say, well, I make good money. Why should I bother? I feel with many women secretly, there's this thing that they are not prepared to become a leader. And that takes, that takes something. And it will be best if you get help to do that. So have a conversation with a business coach. Someone like me, for example. Uh, it, it can start off with a short 15 minute uh, call where we just check out each other. And eventually, if you want to seriously continue growing your business and you feel I'm the one that can help you, we will have another call. And then I'll know after the 15 minutes if I can even help you. Yeah, otherwise we will not have the next call. So we will post a link in the YouTube description. So please go and check it out. You can schedule the call. And if not, you know, I just hope you learned something. That's always my passion and my mission. Because so many more women should build bigger businesses. If we do, ladies, the world is going to change. All right. Bye bye.